And I now look to Sir Julian King to continue the case for the opposition. Uh, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, um, very glad to be here this evening. We, we've heard of you from the continent. Uh, let me offer you a more mainstream one. Because from what I see in Brussels, indeed from what I see in other EU capitals, the mood, contrary to what you might take from some of the speeches this evening, is very positive. There is a renewed sense of confidence, and with some reason. The euro area is growing at its fastest rate for a decade. Uh, the EU as a whole is outpacing growth in the US, Japan, Latin America. Debt and unemployment, while undoubtedly in some cases too high, are falling. The world's coming knocking. EU trade agreements with Canada in the bag, Japan almost finished, Latin America, starting with Australia and New Zealand. Elections in the Netherlands and France have been and gone. They did not follow the populist surge that some predicted. And what's happening in Germany, what's happening in Germany at the moment, I submit, is actually the sign of a constitutional democracy working well. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying all is rosy. There was a big fire in Brussels today. Uh, some reports suggest it started in a waffle factory. There is a great deal of hot air and waffle in Brussels. There is no doubt about it whatsoever. But there are also some more serious challenges that, that we all face. Uh, a declining share of global population. Ongoing issues in the euro area, which I do not deny. The threat of terrorism and cybersecurity, the challenges of migration, rising populism in some EU countries, a menace from Russia, which I hear has come as far as this house, <laughs> the UK leaving the Union, a White House that is less aligned with European views. But these challenges are strengthening the EU's unity and sense of common purpose. Mm. The fact is, EU members are less likely to break ranks when faced with a common challenge. In a hostile and difficult world, they see strength in unity. Faced with a common security threat, crosses borders, cyber attacks or terrorism, EU members have understood the importance of working together to protect our values and our way of life and cut the room for terrorists and others who wish us ill. Last week, 23 countries chose, no one made them, to do more work together on defence under an EU framework. The EU is taking a united position on key issues that matter. Sanctions on Russia, defending a global agreement on climate change, and the Iran deal. The EU is standing up to defend international institutions, even if others are not. Supporting the UN, the World Bank, the global trading system. Far from ditching the euro, the world's second largest reserve currency, the consensus is that it needs strengthening. People are embracing that. The problem with the analysis from those outside the euro that somehow it is doomed to fail is that those inside the euro do not agree. With strengthened borders, a new border and coast guard agency, with the a, deal, a deal with Turkey, we have seen arrivals of migrants into the EU drop enormously. In the case of Greece, down 97%. Faced with questions about the rule of law in Poland and, and Hungary, people are turning to Europe to affirm and defend common values. And indeed, faced with Brexit, the EU is united in wanting a smooth and orderly withdrawal. No one, least of all me, is going to pretend that the EU is some kind of panacea that makes all the problems go away. Military threats, economic challenges, terrorist threats, separatism, they still exist today as they always have within as well as without of the EU. But for many across Europe, the EU is not the problem, it's part of the solution. For those people, the original reasons for founding the EU have never seemed more relevant. The EU has grown to be the world's biggest single market, the world's biggest trader, the world's biggest development donor, committed to international cooperation with the rule of law, not the rule of the strongest, with decisions and laws that affect all members agreed by their elected governments and representatives. So the clear majority on the continent simply would not recognise the motion that is before you this evening. Where's, the, where's that leave Britain? What does that mean for Britain? Let me please just press on because otherwise I shall get into terrible trouble. Where does, this, where does this leave Britain as Britain leaves the European Union? 
Well, whether inside or outside the club, the EU's success has been, and I believe, will continue to be in Britain's interests. Not just economic, but not least economic. Britain has benefited and will continue to benefit from the EU's economic success. The EU accounts for half of the UK's trade. EU member states include seven of Britain's top 10 trading partners. Also on security, yes, NATO has a vital role. Uh, the Union includes 21 fellow members of NATO and is reinforcing its security in support and complementing NATO. Uh, Britain has many of its closest allies in the fight against terrorism in the EU. That is why no part of the UK agenda to weaken or undermine the EU. We want a strong EU. The UK is there to be supportive of the EU. Not my words, but those of the former president of this union, one Boris Johnson. As the referendum clearly shows, a country can always choose to leave the EU if its people so wish. That was Britain's choice. But there's no signal uh, that others want to follow, that that is the start of the decline and fall of the EU as a whole. 27 members remain. Five more are in negotiations to join. Across these countries, the majority of people are resolutely optimistic about the EU's future. I entirely agree that we must be careful not to run ahead of the people. Nearly three quarters of people in the euro currency area favour continued membership. Three quarters in the EU favour a common defence and security policy. Eight in ten support the free movement of people to live, work, study and do business anywhere else in the EU. Of course, there are those who will take another view. Mr Bude, your party secured two seats in the Dutch Parliament this year, but you are in the minority. In the Netherlands, parties supporting the EU took over 60% of the seats. In Germany, over 75%. In France, over 85%. Why this level of support? Because for those in other European, other EU countries, the EU symbolises democracy, liberty, modernity, the rule of law. Again, not my words, those of David Davis addressing the Conservative Party conference in October, as I'm sure you'll remember. If your freedom has been hard fought, as we've heard, hard won, membership of the club of an open liberal set of democracies is precious and prized. If, as we've heard, you previously lived under the hardship of war, the dictatorship in Spain or in Portugal, or Soviet tyranny, you do not take democracy, liberty or the rule of law for granted. The EU's future is in the hands of its members. It will exist as long as they want it to. No other EU country is arguing to leave. They're unlikely to do so any time soon. So there will continue to be an EU. And frankly, that's in all our interests. It's something we can all cheer. Thank you.